Today will be a day to remember for the rest of your life. The Pro Football Hall of Fame is excited to present the heart of a Hall of Famer program connected by Extreme Networks. With over 100 Hall of Famers participating, we have reached 47 states and countries all over the world, sharing the message that football is more than a game and can teach Americans important life values like commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and excellence. But you have to make right decisions even when nobody's watching you. Well, respect is not just given out. It's not handed out like a, like a, like a brochure. It's earned. Today, you are presented with an opportunity to meet and learn from one of the greatest football players of all time. But more important than that, the chance to see that their Hall of Fame life wasn't given to them. They didn't roll out the bed great. They put the work in, on the field, in the weight room, in the classroom, in their communities. They made themselves a Hall of Famer on and off the field. Your feet can't take you where your mind's never been. Because you can make it, but it's just going to take a little hard work, and some effort, and the drive and determination. And today, you will learn you can do the same thing they did. You don't have to have a gold jacket or a bronze bus to make a difference in the lives of others. It's your decision whether you want to be a successful student, son, daughter, brother or sister. If attitudes are contagious, is your attitude worth catching? It's integrity as well because when you decide to pursue something and you don't quit, that says a lot about you. Commitment to excellence. We can all aspire to be the best. Welcome to a once in a lifetime program, the heart of a Hall of Famer program connected by Extreme Networks. The head coach told me that I was not going to start. They had decided to go with the younger ball player, the ones I had mentored that whole summer. This knock described me. I fell out of love with football for the first time in my life. This knock sent me and my son Trey back to Whistler, Alabama, where my family, my community, and my church welcomed me home. Right. Back in August, when the phone call came from Dave Baker, the senior Hall of Fame committee, and a few Hall of Famers, I began to hope and pray that football might be ready to love me back. So, Mr. Hall of Famer Kenny Houston, Earl Campbell, Evan Bethay, Curly Cup, Mike Check. Jackie the Slater, Lim Bunny, Warren Moon, Ricky Jackson, my man Lawrence Taylor, and my class of 2018 Pro Football Hall of Fame. When they knocked on my door, all of my dreams came true. And after all these years, I'm at home! All right, with that, I'd like to welcome everybody back to the Pro Football Hall of Fame for another excellent Pro Football Hall of Fame, Heart of a Hall of Famer series connected by Extreme Networks. My name is Jake Ray, and I'm the Youth and Education Manager here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, coming to you live from Canton, Ohio, within the, the depths of the Hall of Fame, where it's our mission to honor the heroes of the game, to preserve its history, to promote its values, and to celebrate excellence together. And those values we promote are those of commitment, integrity, courage, respect, trust. And those values not only make our Hall of Famers get that gold jacket, have that K Jewelers Ring of Excellence, get that bronze bust here in Canton, Ohio, but it's so much more than that. These values make them great men, great people in their community, great fathers, sons, brothers, whatever it might be. And you'll be surprised to hear how often these values come up in everything that we talked about today. I know I'm excited and I hope all of our students out there are excited as well to learn a little bit about the man Robert Brazil, Dr. Doom, as he was so met, uh, named uh, throughout his career. Uh, so before we get started, first off, some awesome thank yous we want to pass out. First off, our great partners 
at Extreme Networks. Uh, we could not do this program without them. They do so many great things for us here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame and so many great things for schools all over the country. So thank you to them and their support. Secondly, our teachers, administrators, educators, all of the staff there at Satsuma High School in Alabama for being our host today. Uh, thank you guys so much for all that you do for us indirectly at the Hall of Fame uh, and being able to allow us to be a small part of your learning experience this year. And then lastly, students, gotta thank you guys. You know, without you guys today, this program doesn't take place. To be honest with you, nobody wants to hear me ask questions the entire time. We want to hear the questions you have, and all of our interactive schools are going to get the, the chance to do that, to submit questions uh, and, and talk to, to Mr. Brazil today from schools literally all over the country. Uh, for those of you who are interactive, we'll come to your school periodically throughout the event today uh, to take some questions. For those who are only view only, just watching us on Zoom, uh, feel free to just, just all comment, pop up there, submit your questions in the chat. We'll do our best to see if we can make those as part of the program. And lastly, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, if you're at your school, if you're on your lunch break, if you're a fan of the Oilers and you're watching one of your idols, Dr. Doom, today, uh, submit your questions on Facebook as well. We've got our staff out there monitoring that, and we'll do our best to make those um, available for you guys as well. So without further ado, I please join me and welcome a Hall of Famer, more importantly, a friend of mine, Mr. Robert Brazil. Robert, welcome to the Heart of a Hall of Famer today. Good morning, Jake. This, this is such a pleasure. Uh, growing up here in Satsuma, I get a chance to see some of these guys as I drive around on my golf cart or on my bicycle or even walking with my wife. And they really didn't know me as a, a Hall of Famer. They just know me as just a good Biden citizen that live here in Mobile. So I'm going to give them a little bayou about me and bring them up to this gold jacket. I was born and raised over in Pritchett. My mother has three sons, my daddy has three sons. I'm the oldest of the three. We, um, we had the same kind of bringing up that you had. I had certain things that pushed me a little further than my brothers, but they pushed me into a place that I never thought I would be so wanted to hear a knock on the door. Uh, when I got the opportunity to be a finalist in the, um, Pro Football Hall of Fame. The president of the Pro Football Hall of Famer, Dave Baker, came to my door and knocked. And I never forget these words, and I hope that all of y'all or some of y'all get a chance to, to get this, this. He told me, welcome to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And his words was, we will honor your history of football. We will, we will, uh, value your this is all thanks to you Rob for all the hard work that you had done for us he read those things to me and told me and we all in a big hug and it was so heartwarming today it was life-changing not only for me for my kids my parents and this community I go around here now people call me not Robert Brazil they call me Hall of Famer you know, hey, Hall of Famer, you know, I met some of you guys, granddads and parents and everything. So it's such an honor to be here to pour my heart out to y'all because it really is from coming from the heart to be here today. Awesome. Well, it's a great way to, uh, to open the program. Couldn't have done it or said it better myself. And I, I can say from all of us here at the Hall of Fame, we're, we're happy you're a Hall of Famer and we're happy we get to talk to you. Uh, here today. I know we got kind of a, a short period today, so I don't want to miss out on anything. So I want to dive straight in uh, to our students' questions because that's why we're here today uh, to get the opportunity for some of our students across the country to ask questions to the great Robert Bizzle. So without further ado, we're going to start off. We're going to go out to Maple Heights uh, right here in Ohio. So our, our students there at Maple Heights, uh, Mr. Green's class, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Uh, have your students step up to the mic and then ask their question. My name is Darren Hansfield, Maple Heights Decap. And my question is, what character quality do you believe it takes to be a Hall of Fame player? Repeat the question. I, you take your mask down, I can hear you. What what character quality do you believe it takes to be a Hall of Fame player? That's a very good question. It says that in the values of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It takes commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and again, excellence. 
will be your reward if you put in all the hard work that these people ask you to do. You got to believe in your coaches, your teachers, your parents, and they're not out there to tell you nothing wrong. But if you believe in to put all that in that they're asking you to put in, you'll be successful. And hopefully one day you'll be able to get a gold jacket. And that just doesn't mean a gold jacket to become a Hall of Famer. That means a gold jacket to be the best employee that you can be, a gold jacket to be the best student that you can be. That that idea of a gold jacket, yeah, you want to be a Hall of Fame football player, but that idea of a gold jacket means so much more than just being a Hall of Famer. It's succeeding in whatever field, whatever thing that you love to do. It's that idea of you know being the best and getting a gold jacket, but more importantly, trying your hardest and working together. I agree with you so much. All right, our next school we're going to go to is Carl Harvey Elementary School, I believe, all the way out in California. So, they, I mean, wow. they're, they're just waking up out there. Uh, so, we're going to go ahead out to, to Carl Harvey Elementary for our next question. My name is Julia from Harvey Elementary. We're listening to the morning announcement, but give us a second. We'll take a look at the, uh, the question mark. See, it's so early. We, we beat the morning announcements out there in, in California. So uh, we're, we're super excited to have you guys connected in uh, to be uh, a part of the program today. So whenever you're ready, uh, go ahead, speak up a little bit so we can hear you. Tell us your name and then ask your question. Hi, my name is Jillian from Harvey Elementary Center. I'm a California. We love a story about you taking your best take and making your own football jersey. When you were a kid, what would you tell kids today to motivate them for greatness like you? All right, Mr. Brazil, when you were a kid growing up down there in Alabama, what helped motivate you or how did you motivate yourself to eventually become the great football player that you were ending up here in Kane, Ohio at the Hall of Fame? Well, I can think of two or three uh, incidents. I grew up in a place where there are so many great baseball players and these were my idols. You're talking about Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, Willie McCurvey, uh, Billy Williams, Satchel Page, And my uncle made sure that he put us around those guys to give us something to shoot for. And I've watched them work out. And I saw, saw all the efforts and everything they put in it. And I said, one day, if I've worked hard, I wonder if I could get to be that person. And it worked out good because I, I, I took that to the hill and I, and I still do it all day with just being a good dad. I'm still working just that hard with my family. And it's true. I think it, it goes to show that the lessons you learn from the game of football, you know, apply to so many different things. You know, I'm sure there's lessons that you learned from the game that you do apply to be a, a great dad and a great husband and a great granddad and, and all those things. Um, looking at the game, what is one life lesson that you kind of pulled away? or one value that you learned from the game that you're like, you know, I could probably apply this to my everyday life and help me become a better person. I would think we took that courage. I think courage every morning that you get up, you got to take a deep breath. You got to have courage to face that day. You don't know what's going to happen to you or what you're going to have to do or what you got to fight or what, what you got to be, to be successful in that day. So it takes courage to be able to take that into a positive platform and to do whatever you got to do to be successful that day. Awesome, awesome. All right, we're gonna keep it rolling here. We're now gonna go out to Villas Elementary School for our next question. So Villas, I know you guys are already right there in your, in your boardroom there. So whenever you're ready, go ahead, unmute your microphone. Uh, have the students step up there and go ahead and ask their question. All right, there we go. All right, whenever you're ready there, uh, go ahead and ask your question. Why did you want to play football? Very good question. Young ladies, first of all, good morning. You know, I taught middle school, so I know it takes a lot of courage for you to get up and ask the question, but that's a very good question. Being raised in Mobile, there were so many, like again, football or baseball player. I didn't like that curveball, so I had to find something else to do. <laughs> Curve ball is something else to sit there and let somebody throw something at your head and you don't know if it's going to break away or not. And I was the kind of little abortion, little, what you call a huffy sized kid. And I wanted to play football and I wanted to play defense. I wanted to be like a Dick Buckets. I wanted to be like a Willie Lanier. Those was my idols growing up. So they influenced me more to play football and linebacker. 
Awesome. A, a great way. And it's cool to see that. I'm sure there's people that inspired you uh, in the game of football, but I'm sure there's folks who inspired you outside the game as well. And that leads me into my, my next question here. Just got a message from Jerry Shockey, director here uh, in our youth and education department, who's connected in and watching all of our Zoom chats. Sent me a message that says, uh, Mr. Mr. Herb's class at Denison Elementary right here in Cleveland, Ohio, had that question. Who inspired you? And now we know who inspired you on the field, but off the field in your career, who was a big inspiration to you? I think I took the initiative myself. You know, um, I was born the oldest kid of the family, and I always wanted to do what was right to set an example for my two brothers. Um, so I've worked hard. This is, I hate to use the word, I've worked hard, or, because it takes more than I to do this thing. You got to have somebody to work out with you. You know, it was different events in, in my life that pushed me to the, I had good, well, I say partners in, in, in school. Ricky Young that played with the Minnesota Vikings lived around the corner for me. And we always tried to outrun each other, I'd catch each other, or try to perform better than anybody else. So I would give a lot of respect that to Ricky and my uncle Odell, which was, should have been a, a Hall of Famer baseball player who inspired me to stick to some type of sport and get away from up under my mama's wing. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to our next school now. We're actually going to stay uh, at Denison Elementary, but we're going to go to our interactive class there at Denison, Miss St Stimax class uh, there. So whenever you guys are ready there in Cleveland, go ahead and unmute your microphone, and uh, we'll take our next question from our folks at Denison Elementary. Good morning, Mr. Brazil. Uh, how are you doing today? Magnificent. I'm here in Satsuma. It's nice. It's a, a lovely day here in Satsuma. You need to be here. The weather's about 70 degrees. And I got a classroom full of good gators here, and we're ready to hear your question. Hmm. I'm Miss Steinmeck. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to thank you for coming to answer all of our questions for us. Um, one question we had are, what obstacles did you overcome as a child? Obstacles. I don't think it was an obstacle. My, I grew up in a, a Christian home. My mother is the mother of the church and my dad is the head secretary of the church. So it wasn't too many obstacles because that was a thing because if you did something, you was held accountable for that. You know, we didn't, we didn't want to be uh, raised no different than anyone else, but I want to have a standard in life that my parents have set for me. So I didn't have too many obstacles. I think one of the biggest things that I had to overcome back in, you guys would never know this, when I was a freshman in high school, it was the first year they integrated the black school with the white school. I was going to Blunt High School, which is in Pritchett, and I was transferred over to Viga High School. And I had to go to my first, second, third, and fourth period class with a National Guard. So I think that was the obstacle, not only for me, but the whole school to get over to find out that everybody is treated equal. Everybody sounded like, tasted like, they may be different colors, but we're all human beings and we should be treated fair. Awesome, it's a, a great answer. And, and you know, you, you obviously, it's a different time than it was back then now, but you know, experiencing those things and experiencing those obstacles, I'm sure taught you so many life lessons at such a young age. Um, how did you take those life lessons that you learned at such a young age and be able to kind of keep those in your in the forefront of your mind throughout your entire career? You know, some people, it takes them into their late teens, you know, early 20s in their college years to probably learn some of the important life lessons that you learned as a first, second and third grader. How important was that to you? And truly, did it help you become a better student and a better athlete at the end of the day? It did because I was so shy. I mean, it's hard to say. Uh a linebacker, uh, 310 pounds at one time. Now I'm about 240. But back then I was about 98 pounds soaking wet. And uh, I was scared. Uh, but it made me become a better person because of the, uh, the things that was thrown at me. I still had to get my lesson. I still had to do my homework. I still had to uh, prepare myself on the football field. So. I just, it, I get in and took it to, it's all on me. I could have turned my back and, and ran from it, but I faced it head up and tried to deal with it on a daily basis. 
And I think that's super important because it, it shows that you didn't, because a lot of people could have said, you know what, I'm done with this crumble and give up. But those learning that at such a young age helped out in, in so much. And you, you talk about the idea of preparation and mentally preparing, which is something every NFL player has to do. No matter if you're the 54th guy on the practice squad, if you're the 53rd guy on the active roster, or you're the MVP of the league, everybody's got to prepare the same way. So looking back on your career, was there a certain individual, certain team that you went up against that you had to put maybe a little extra preparation in? Or was there a guy you played against, maybe a current teammate of your and your Hall of Fame team here in Canton, Ohio, that you thought you're like, all right, I got to study a little extra harder this week in, in order to prepare for the matchup? That's a, that's a great question. First of all, everybody that was in the Hall of in the uh, NFL are great ball players. You got to prepare every week, all day, every day, and as long as you can to get prepared for them. But I'm going to give this credit to, I always tell people, I slept with the best two running backs in the world, Earl Campbell with the Houston Oilers, and my classmate at, at, uh, at Jackson State, Walter Payton. I stepped in this guy in this room with this guy for four years, and he was one of my worstest ones to try to prepare for because Walter was different every day. He got up. And I never beat this guy up, first of all. And he, you had to prepare for Walter. I mean, with some kind of thing that he's going to do to you that you never seen. So I would give all that credit to Walter Payton, even, even this gold jacket, because without Walter at Jackson State, I probably would never been discovered. You know, uh, the scouts came there looking at Walter Payton and found out, oh, that's a guy named Rob Brazil playing middle linebacker. I think he can play too. And that's a guy named Jackie Slater, which is a Hall of Famer. We give all this credit to a guy that worked to the ultimate. I worked out with him every day. I never could out working. So I'm going to give it to Walter. So a uh, pretty cool kind of a, a little sidebar here. Jackson State, all at the same time. Walter Payton, Robert Brazil, Jackie Slater. That. Yes. That's not a bad lineup to throw out there every Saturday uh, against your rivals, for sure. That's the most should have been there. I think Leon Gray, Manuel Zanders, and a couple more guys are uh, Hall of Fame quality, but that's yet to be seen. And we talk about those guys. You mentioned, we mentioned Jackie Slater, uh, yourself, Walter Payton, uh, Earl Campbell, a teammate of yours uh, in the league. You know, they're all Hall of Famers, and they're all immortalized here in Canton, Ohio. So, uh, part of our mission is to not only to honor the heroes of the game like yourself and those other Hall of Famers, but it's also to preserve the history of the game. And what better way to preserve that history than putting that bronze bust on display and showcasing in, in one simple statue what you and your career meant to the game of football. So what better way to show that than actually show it? So we're going to throw it out live to the Hall of Fame Museum, our Hall of Fame Gallery where Nathan Martin, the youth and education coordinator, is hey, hey, in hey, front hey. of that, in front of your bust. Hey, Jake, I got my bust here, Seth Summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we, we might have one on display, too. So Nathan's in front of there. So Nathan, whenever you're ready, uh, take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jake. And like he was telling you guys, uh, I am in the Pro Football Hall of Fame Gallery here in Canton, Ohio. And, and when you come to visit the Hall of Fame, uh, if you're lucky enough here in Canton, this is the place that everyone wants to spend time at. They want to come into this Hall of Fame gallery. They want to see these bronze busts, uh, their favorite players that have ever played um, from their favorite teams. Uh, and, and to put it in perspective of how special you uh, it is to, to have one of these bronze busts and how good you really have to be. And right here is Mr. Robert Brazil's bronze bust, class of 2018. And, and the history of pro football, there have been over 300 million people that have played the game at all levels. We're talking Pop Warner, high school, at any level, over 300 million. There have only been about 5 million players that have been you know, good enough, talented enough, lucky enough to play the game at the college level uh, the way that Mr. Brazil did at Jackson State. But of that 5 million that played in college, there have only been about 30,000 that have played or coached the game at the professional level. And then if we take it one step further from that 30,000 that have had uh, a hand in the professional game, only 354 have one of these bronze busts. And uh, Mr. Brazil is, is more than deserving. Uh, I was looking at some stats right here. You know, he's uh, first team all pro five different times. He was uh, voted to seven consecutive Pro Bowls. He was named a member 
of the NFL's all-decade team in the 1970s. So you guys can see he is more than deserving to have one of these bronze busts and join uh, his college teammates, Walter Payton and, and Jackie Slater, uh, here in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now they're teammates forever as a part of this Hall of Fame family. And uh, a question for you, Mr. Brazil, because you were talking about your time at Jackson State, uh, you guys you know, also have had Lynn Barney. He's an alum that attended Jackson State, so four Hall of Famers. But now you guys have a Hall of Fame coach, uh, coaching the football team and Coach uh, Deion Sanders, Coach Prime. And we just got to know, what are your thoughts on the, the Jackson State football team right now? I know they've got a really good record, and Coach Prime's doing a lot of good things. So what are your thoughts on your alma mater uh, this year in the college football world? First of all, I'm so happy. You know, Dion called me back before he took the uh, job at uh, Jackson State, and I happened to have my parents around my kitchen table eating some fried fish and grits and stuff like that. And I get this telephone call, and I look at it. It says Dion Sanders. So I pick it up. He said, Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. I said, oh, Dion? He said, Hall of Famer 312, ain't that you? I said, yeah, this is me. He said, Robert, I want to ask you one thing. I'm considering taking the job at Jackson State. Would you support me? And before I can get it out of my mouth, my mama said, yes, he will. <laughs> so since then, I've been supporting him as much as I could. I'm an honorary child member there, and I'm so proud, and I can't wait. I leave here Friday morning, going to Chicago, from, from Chicago, I go over to Jackson, and we're going to beat the, beat the last team we have to beat, which is Alcorn, which is an in-state rival, and we'll have a, the undefeated SWAC season. And I'm so happy for him, and I hope that he stays there and do better things. I'm so proud, and we can never thank him so much. Yeah, that's awesome, and it, it is amazing, the things that he's accomplishing there at Jackson State at your alma mater, and uh, he also – is one of your Hall of Fame teammates. So uh, thank you so much for being a part of this program and what you've done for the game of football and the history of the game. Uh, but I'm going to send it back to Jake because I think we've got some more student questions to uh, wrap up the program today. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Nathan. I will be honest. You know, Nathan stole my next question. So that was the same question I was going to ask uh, about your time and, and Coach Prime there at Jackson State. But, yes, yeah, just like Nathan said, we do have some other questions, some other students we want to get to. So we got two groups from the same school. We're going to go ahead and go out to Mound and our to our first class, and that is Mr. Pierce's class uh, for our next question. So Mr. Pierce there at Mound Middle School, uh, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Uh, have a student step up there and go ahead and ask their question. It looks like we got a student, you know, slowly making their way up to the camera here to ask our question. So whenever you guys are ready there, go ahead and uh, state your name and then ask your question for Mr. Brazil. Hi, how are you doing? My name is Delonte Warner. And the question I got is, what emotion do you feel when you used to be on the field? What emotion, Mr. Brazil, did you feel when you were on the field? Or maybe it was that moment when you ran out of the tunnel pregame. What was that moment? What did that feel like? That's a good question because I came out in different ways. I prepared myself Monday through Friday to be able to run out that emotionally. When you prepare yourself, you can't wait to get that first opening kickoff, guys. I mean, when you get that feeling, you know you're right. I don't care what they're going to do on the other side of the field. I mean, physically, mentally, and, and ready to just go out and destroy you. So my emotion is real high. My mama said, if he ever bucket that head up, I won't go in that hole because he'll hit me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's cool because, that you know, there's so many people that, that – you know, some people are nervous. Some people are excited. Some people don't watch any film. Some people watch all kinds of film and everybody prepares differently. But I think that same feeling when that ball kicks off, there's a little bit, no matter how long you've been in the league, there's always a little bit of butterflies that, that still float around in, in the stomach before, before each game. I think, it, I think it happened a little sooner. I think for me, it's when the national anthem is played. It's something that goes through my bones still today. If I'm listening to the national anthem, when they like, by the time they had the flyover, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I want to stop it right then and go. <laughs> awesome. All right, we're gonna go now to uh, the other there school there at Mound the Middle School, Mr. Drew's class. So, Mr. Drew, go ahead and have some students step up to the microphone, uh, unmute yourself there, and ask our question for Mr. Brazil.
All right, whenever you're ready there. Yeah, right. All right, whenever you guys are ready, go ahead. Um, in the camera, I got it. We're moving oh, all around. No. Oh, there we are. How long did it take you to get where you are today? How long, how, much how, might long be? Or, how long or what did it take to get to, to where Robert is today? years old a long time <laughs> well i would say you, you've been it just didn't happen yesterday uh, you know uh you know you're a seasoned veteran as we like to say uh but yeah so so what so we know it took a lot of time it took time at college i mean high school college a professional career then a long wait to become a hall of famer um That's but okay, I got but you. that that will go kind of to that period between retirement and and finally getting the call that from mr baker that knock on the door saying welcome to canton what was that time like for you? Was there ever a time when you struggled with, hey, maybe I will, maybe I won't? And how did you ultimately kind of persevere through that adversity? Well, that was one of the things that uh, every uh, ball player that's out there that's not a Hall of Fame was going through right now. Mine was kind of different from everybody. You know, I played 10 Ironman season with the Houston Oilers. And after my retirement, I came home and I worked 27 years in the mobile public school system as a paraprofessional. And the kids would ever ask me, you play football? I said, yeah, I played football. And they said, yeah, you ain't played football. And I'm saying, yeah, I played football. And I went to coaching at my alma mater. And the same questions kept coming up. Every now and then I became a finalist, not a finalist, but it would come up that you are being considered as a Hall of Famer. But I was worried, Jake, the whole while because the Houston Oilers moved from Houston to Tennessee. I had no home or no reunions and I was out of this league. So it was kind of getting weird. And I always wanted for my mom and dad to witness me being inducted to the Hall of Fame. It took 30, 27 years, 27 years, 27 years for me to, for them to see me. And that probably was the best thing that ever happened to me to witness and to be blessed to have my, my parents witness me get this gold jacket and my dad present me and I gave him a hug and a kiss and cried like a baby. <laughs> I, I remember it like it was yesterday, you unveiling your bust on stage with, with your father. It was a very cool moment uh, to see for sure. Uh, I'd be remiss if we didn't get time for some students right there in front of you at, at Satsuma High School there. Uh, so if there's any students that have a question there in front of you, go ahead. You get to choose who. Uh, have them ask your question. Just repeat it so we can hear it and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. Well, you know, ladies are first, and I'm going to pick out one sweet lady. If you raise your hand and got a question, I would love for you to ask me a question. Some young lady, because y'all got a question. Yeah. The question was, Jake, she said, what kept me motivated? You know, as a kid, I saw my dad and my mom go to work, and it was some bad days. It was cold out there, and I know my dad was a messenger at the shipyard, so I mean, he had to get on this scooter at three below and go to work. And uh, but I, and the motivation came because he never, he never missed a day, and that gave me the willpower to say I want to be like my dad and better. I didn't, you know, I, for, I, I told you I played ten Iron Man season because I worked out. I never missed a game and never missed a practice. Just so that that carried over from being a kid watching him go to work, my mom going to work and all of my uncles and everybody going to work. So that's what I did. I, I, it's cool because, you know, you, you grow up in those situations and you see your parents, you know, put in the work and, you know, you don't even probably even think about it, but half the time when you're growing up, you're using those same values, those same yes. key pieces to become who you are. And you don't even subconsciously even think about that, but it's all about how you grow up and the people that you grew up around. And we'll kind of get into a little bit of that here. We got another question from a Zoom attendee. This is from Villa's Elementary School, another class that we, classroom we have connected in. Uh, and they, they're from Florida, and they want to know which teammates supported you the most. So along those same lines, which teammates supported you the most, and what did you are, were you able to learn from your teammates that then you kind of were able to use throughout your life? Well, it has to be the running backs. You know, I want to be the best friend with running backs, but I'm going to give that credit again to the late, great Walter Payton, you know, uh, to be able to work out with this guy, to be able to cherish his dream, to be able to see his vision, to be able to 
have the same mindset with him when we working out and playing each other. You know, so I have, I'm going to say Walter. Walter Payton is the one that I'm going to give all that, that credit to. Awesome, man. I think he is, you know, been one of those guys that has truly changed the game of football, not on the field, but you look at his off the field success. Too. There's a reason there's a reason there's the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award that's given out to to people, to NFL players every year. And it's cool because, we you know, we some of our Hall of Famers have won that award and you ask them, you know, which award meant the most to you. And they have the Super Bowl ring. They got the Hall of Fame ring. They've got the gold jacket, but they go, no, it's the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award because it affected their community uh, so much. Um, I know I've seen some some questions pop up here. And again, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. I mentioned at the beginning, Dr. Doom. A lot of people come and we kind of brush over it, but throughout your career, you were known as Dr. Doom, which one of the probably coolest nicknames probably have ever heard in the NFL. So I know there's a lot of people asking, how did you get the nickname Dr. Doom and why did it stick throughout your career? Again. Um, my name is Robert Lorenzo Brazil Jr. My dad gave me that name for a reason because he wanted me to do well with that name and make his name great. I got the name Dr. Doom was in a college all-star game. You guys don't know nothing about the college all-star game, so I got to tell you the story. The college all-stars, when they picked all the top college players in the world to play the Super Bowl champion, and it's played in Chicago every year. They don't do that no more because of the injury prones and stuff that rookies may get now. So we there, we got a linebacker from SC named Richard Wood. Richard Wood nickname was Batman. And he's supposed to be the hot ranking, you know, linebacker in, in the country. We got a chance and he's got a chance to showcase his talent and I got a chance to showcase my talent. So one morning at breakfast, he's sitting there with the Chicago Tribune and he looked in and said, Robert, I finally got a nickname for you. I said, a nickname for me? I want to be Robert Brazil, you know? He said, no, you got to have a nickname. So he said, this cartoon character named Dr. Doom. I said, Dr. Doom? He said, yeah, Howard Cosell, which is one of the biggest names in the NFL, sitting down there sipping on a cup of coffee, said, Richard, that's a good name for him. And I looked at Howard and I said, Howard, why is it a good name for me? He said, you take that doom part, D-O-O-M. I said, yeah, where you going with this? He said, death on offensive men. Ain't that what you do? <laughs> I said, yeah, I'll take it. So from that, from that game on, everybody know me as Dr. Doom. A lot of people have a problem pronouncing Brazil. They call it Brazil, Brazil, but Dr. Doom is stuck with me and it's been an awesome nickname. Uh, very, very cool. And it's one of those ones that, like you said, it, it was so good. Even today, we're still referring to Robert Brazil as Dr. Doom, that menacing linebacker that played for the Oilers. Um, you know, and I like to talk about that because you're kind of in a unique situation where you played your career in Houston for the Oilers, you know, retired as an Oiler, but then your franchise that you played for moved cities um, after long after your career was over. How did you know, you kind of embrace the new identity of a Tennessee Titan instead of a Houston Oiler. And how does that relationship work nowadays since that the Houston Oilers aren't around anymore? I was hoping that somebody brought that up. And that's a very good question. When you play for a franchise like I did and they move and you don't have any ties to a reunion, I've a, my team only moved, it changed name. So Amy Scratch, which is the owner of the Tennessee Titans, reached out to all the Houston Oilers, and we had our first reunion. Now, I'm, I'm trying to hold up because this is very emotional for me to see all of my old teammates. One of my teammates, and I made a speech to all of them, Curly Cup, we all gonna pray for him. I'm leaving like that. But when she reached out for us and told us, and she made me a ring of honor, a reception from her, I was so happy. I'm in the ring of honor in, in, town, in uh, Tennessee. And I tell people now, I was born a Houston Oilers, but I'm a die a Tennessee Titans. So I bought it, you, you can't see it, but here I got all of my jerseys, and I got a, my high school jersey, Viger, 
Jackson State jersey, and I got a Houston Oilers jersey, but I got my Ring of Honor jersey, number 52, from the Tennessee Titans, and I'm so proud of, of them, and I'm so thankful that what she did reaching out to not only me, the rest of the Houston Oilers. Very cool, very cool. And one of the advantages of being a host school, you kind of get to see a little bit extra, you bringing your jerseys there. That's very cool, and it is a cool relationship because, you know, some people probably think that they don't, you know, it's teams not around, Let's not embrace that. You know, we have a new identity, but very cool to see that the owner there uh, with the Titans did embrace that and brought all of those great players. And you mentioned Curly Cope, like you said, our, our prayers are and thoughts are with him as he's going through uh, some cancer battles there. Um, definitely uh, thinking of him as we, uh, you know, kind of go through our lives approaching the holidays here. Um, I know a class there at Satsuma is about to wrap up, so I do apologize if we run through the bell here. Uh, but I, one last question we want to ask before we wrap everything up today. First off, Students, thank you so much. I've seen the chat notification keep popping up that we have all these great questions that have come in today. And we, we apologize, we couldn't get to them all uh, today. So we uh, one, we wanna thank everybody for participating today. Robert, thank you for giving time out of your, your busy schedule today to come go, go back to a school uh, to spend some time uh, there in your hometown. But last question we wanna wrap up with today. And there's been so many good pieces of information, ways the game of football can impact your life on and off the field. But if there's one message you want to get across or one idea that you want everybody to leave with today, whether they're a teacher, a student, our staff here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, what is that one piece of information, one value, one nugget of information you want everybody to take away from today? It's something that I think my dad and I have one principal, he used to live by this, and I worked under this guy for years and years, though. So. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson used to say after all his announcements, and I've heard it from my dad over and over so many times, I want my boys to remember the three B's. And I used to say, and I said, no, he's not going there. <laughs> he said, but I want you guys, as I talk to y'all, and as I say bye, I want to thank y'all for having me. But I want y'all to remember these three B's. B prepare, be respectful, and be on time. You take those three Bs and you can go anywhere in this world and people will take you, hug you, and appreciate you. Because we don't do those things, we don't practice these things, but those are three things that I went out. And if you can ask Ms. Ms. Coleman, I was here early because I'm a bit, but being, being on time. I want to be respectful to all of y'all, but I, I, I hope that I was prepared and I really, really enjoyed all of y'all and thank y'all for having me. Awesome. Well, with that, we're going to wrap up this latest installment of the Pro Football Hall of Fame's Heart of a Hall of Famer program connected by Extreme Networks. Uh, uh, Robert, again, thank you so much for being a part of the program today. Always exciting to get to talk to you. i uh, super happy we could have you as part of the program. Uh, thank you for giving up some of your time. Thank you for being a part of the program today. But most importantly, thank you for everything you do for us here at the Hall of Fame and if you've done for the game of football throughout your entire career. And that's even after you retired leading up to being a Hall of Famer today. Uh, you might not know it, but, you know, your imprint, your thumbprint, your fingerprint is on the game of football. And I like to say, you know, anybody who had a minute in the NFL, played a snap, played 30 some years like Tom Brady's probably going to end up playing. They've had an impact on the game of football and the game wouldn't be like it is today without that impact. So thank you for everything you've done for the game of football. And thank you for all that you've done for us here at the pro football hall of fame. Thank you. All thank right. You. With that, we're going to wrap everything up again. Let's everybody give one last big round of applause to Mr. Brazil here, our special guest today on the heart of a hall of famer program connected by extreme networks uh, for everybody who tuned in today. Again, thank you so much. And we hope to see you one day here in Canton, Ohio. Thank you, everybody. We hope to see you next time.